at some point during the day, we've got to go load the U-Haul, figure out how that's all going to work and stuff like that. But not everybody is going to 100% follow the story, which means your job as an actor is to make the story as fantastic and believable slash unbelievable as it possibly can be. And that means through your body movement, through your facial expression, through your lines, the way you react to each other and what's happening in this scenario, every time you perform it, it's supposed to be as whimsical and fantastical as it is the first time. If you think back to when your very first kiss ever was, it's that relating back to so magical. Never happen again, right? Because that first one, once it's done, it's done. But you've got to make every moment on stage as something you can look back to as if you're experiencing it for the very first time. That's what needs to happen. Anybody who wants to, if you want to practice in your flight costume, if you don't want to wear all of it, that's fine. If you do, that's fine. You can do that too. Um, but I do want you guys all wearing your shoes on Tuesday. You gotta get used to your shoes, and your shoes should be in tomorrow. So Sick. hopefully, you all have shoes. So bring your shoes in, wear them on Tuesday. That's that's for everybody, not just for the dancers. This is true for cast and crew. During rehearsals, can we make it a um, point of emphasis that during rehearsals, and especially just because it's the rules of festival, can we not have phones out during rehearsal? I'm just gonna tell you from both perspectives. When cast members see crew members on phones, it makes it appear like the crew members are invested. Understand what I'm saying? When cast members are on phones, it makes those who are on stage feel less important. If you're giving 100% of your energy and attention to what's happening on stage, it makes the entire production, it just raises the bar. So no phones during rehearsals. Any other questions before I let you go? Jake, then Chris. Uh, you want me to actually pull the cord? I'm sure, why not? No gas, I feel like I start. You're positive? I don't, I don't want to. You want to what? Break a 200 year old mower? No, no, I don't want to start a mower. Like, like actually, I'm start. not going to start. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you everyone. We need to get everything back. All right, can I have everyone out here? Have a, have a seat, please. Luce, can we have you down here, too? Dancers, when you come on for, and I'm talking for Thursday, because there's a few things I want to run over again. Uh, by the way, I should say that the ending flight was much better. Much better. We worked on that on Saturday, and it showed, OK? Um, with B and with um, A and with um, Gavin and Sound Up. Working much better. Okay, we're getting there. So, dancers, when you come on, your arms are too stiff. You need to be way more flailing and fluid. Okay? It looks too, like, robotic. Um, Chris, oh, sorry, more volume on the pit when B is thinking about flying and we see B, the baby B coming on and flying. We just need more volume on that. Uh, can we work on 
Kate and Gavin, the whole flying thing? Yeah. Okay, we're getting there. It's better than last time. Yep. Oh, absolutely. Sarah, oh, when you see A the first time, because we've seen you do this so many times, you're not scared enough. Okay. It needs to be as cuckoo and wacky and, you know, if the person next to you see for the first time, ah! oh my God, you know what I mean? It needs to be that, that kind of, <laughs> that kind of scared, you know, talking about. <laughs> that scared? Yeah. Um, oh, when, after dad leaves, after you meet A for the first time and dad leaves, you know how she comes back around the tree? Can you motion like, it's okay, come on out. When you're out here and saying all those words and you get to your final places, can you please not look at Sarah in any way, shape, or form? And then you have to peripherally see it. What would look really cool is if you keep saying those words and you keep building and all of a sudden when you see the, um, when you see the feather fall into the hand, you're all gonna quickly look at Sarah, and then off you go. So you whip your heads around. So you're, you're all looking in different directions, all of a sudden fly, 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 and then it gets into the hand, phew, off you go, okay? Did you forget the word feather before you said Whatever. Uh, opening dance, what else am I running through? Oh, the uh, bee flying, and what else, the storm? The storm, and then you said final flight. That bee flying, oh. that's what I mean. Okay. So those three things I want to run, short break, and then what time is it? It is 4.47. So let's say that places is going to be at 5.10, but let's run these three things. So let's do the opening with the dancers and music and everything, please. Um, and lighting. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to Concord High School and this evening's performance of When She Had Wings. This is our festival show that we'll be taking to the NHETG competition, which starts tomorrow at Pinkerton Academy. So please, if you are going to come and support Concord High School on Saturday, our performance starts at 11. Co Brown is right before us, mm -hmm. and then uh, as soon as our show performs, we then come get all of our set off. We come back on and introduced as a group, and then we get our receive our adjudication. So please feel free to come to Pinkard Academy on Saturday. Get there between 9.30 and 9.45. Buy your tickets to the block of shows. And then once they open the doors, you can come on in, have a seat anywhere you want to. It's a beautiful theater. It's a beautiful theater. Mm. And uh, then again, our performance starts at 11. You, after our adjudication, I'm guessing we'll probably be done around noon. Mm -hmm. So that gives you a time to. And I think that is all that's on my checklist. So I hope that you all sit back, relax, and enjoy the story of When She Had Wings.